So the Washington Post released an article that states the U.S. warned Ukraine it faces a pivotal moment in the war. Now, this is a fairly benign title, but when you read the article, it sounds like the authors are implying the United States and uh, Europe's support of Ukraine is, is going to run out soon. There's a timetable, and that time is running out. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I don't know who this senior official is that spoke to these journalists, but it seems to be that they're running counter to the official stated goals and the stated objectives of the Biden administrations and NATO. So I don't know why they would say something like, we will continue to try and press upon the Ukrainians that we can't do anything and everything forever. Yeah, got it. Forever is a long time and everything is everything. But you don't project that in some sort of bland, vague quote that, can be picked up by Russia and embolden them to assume that the support for Ukraine is waning in the West, because that's exactly what that's going to do. Elliot Cohen says it's a the senior official committed gross strategic malpractice or something worse, which implies he might be actually supporting Russia or wanting Russia, or at least wanting the war to end for with a, with a negotiated settlement in which Russia maintains its territory. That is a hugely immoral stance. We cannot allow that. And the Biden administration and NATO and the United States stance of the United States writ large is not to allow that. So whatever this senior official believes is incorrect. The, a quote from the article goes on to state that Europe's long-term appetite for funding the war effort remains unclear. That is not only just opinion, it's also pretty false when you consider that nine European countries signed on to the Tallinn Group, which was a pledge to support Ukraine with large amounts of equipment and financing to fight this war for as long as it takes. In fact, the Biden administration seems to have to lean on its secretaries to counter this message that came out two days ago, because yesterday, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin spoke on behalf of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, which has 54 different countries, stating that the um, U.S. and 50, the Ukraine Defense Contact Group will support Ukraine's fight for freedom over the long haul. And then also went on to say that they will support Ukraine during its spring counteroffensive. This is 54 countries. This was a clarification that came out to this article. Not even a clarification, just runs counter to the article's stated um, quotes. I mean, Secretary Blinken, when asked about the article, said that Blinken that a lasting peace in Ukraine can't occur if its territorial integrity is not respected. Basically, meaning Russia needs to get out of Ukraine, back to the 2014 Crimean borders. Blinken went on to say that Ukraine giving up territory to Russia would open a Pandora's box. I've said this many times before that um, if we allow Russia to do impose its will in Ukraine, they will continue to do so in places like Moldova, as they've seemed to try to do recently, but also over the past decades with Transnistria. They've done the same with Georgia. It's, they're not going to stop. Blinken went on to say Putin has to give up this on his notion that Ukraine is not its own country. So, yeah. Whoever this senior official is, is running his mouth counter to what the stated goals are. But let's say even if this, the internal policy is something that we in the world don't know, there's a reason for that. If the internal policy is that, yeah, the support to Ukraine is being shut off, you don't telegraph that to the world, especially the Russians, because it emboldens them. If you're going to stop supporting a dependent ally, you don't tell everyone you're going to stop. You ho you ho if there's some f legitimate reason we need to stop, whatever, economic, political, whatever reason there is to stop supporting Ukraine, which I don't think there is. I think the U.S. is also in this for the long haul, as Lloyd Austin has said. You don't go and blab to the whole world because that emboldens the Russians. You don't whine about the support you're giving them. You also don't undercut, and this is like political staffer 101. You don't complain about your own administration's inability to mobilize things like the U.S. economy to help the Ukrainians and then blame the Ukrainians for that. The Defense Production Act was given to Biden to allow him to build, through the, a new Lend-Lease program, build up equipment to give to Ukraine. And of the things that um, I think Biden has done a pretty good job with regard to Ukraine, but the one thing I think that needs to be done far better is the fact that how slow and how kind of timid we are on the support we're giving Ukraine. That is not Ukraine's fault in this article or whoever the senior official implies that. That is our own government's fault here in the U.S. And when you say that 
Uh, when you complain about the amount of industrial capacity needed to support Ukraine, you're essentially telling them the U.S. can't support them when that's not true. You also don't badmouth the allies' ability to conduct and prosecute this war because, one, we're not there trying to fight it. And then, two, you're trying to hold them, the Ukrainians to a standard of the U.S. That's not fair. They're not U.S. in capacity training, equipment, uh, economy, basically everything that you, can, you need to fight a war the U.S. does better than Ukraine. And that's not Ukraine's fault. Where the fault lies is, again, on the administration's inability to give Ukraine what they need to win now. Things like attackums, uh, that would be a huge bolster to them. Because the U.S. has denied that ability, we can't blame Ukraine or Ukraine, Ukraine for um, you, we can't blame Ukraine for not having the ability to win right now. So the reality is, is whoever this official is, it seems like they want to impose their opinion that Ukraine needs to finish a deal with Russia that would allow for Russia to reinforce its losses, and that would be strategically stupid for the u.s the west ukraine obviously as we would all look like foolish weaklings that did all of this just to give russia at least some of what they wanted at the base level it is hugely immoral because these ukrainians have been fighting for their lives their land their homes and we've been helping them and then to have some faceless nameless senior official come out and blab to the Washington Post that, up oh, that support's going to end. That one, the, those one or two sentences do so much damage in emboldening Russia, emboldening China, emboldening any enemy to see the U.S. as not wanting to finish out what um, it's wanted to. It has, it has no appetite to meet its strategic goals. And that's, we, we saw that somewhat with regard to Afghanistan, where we petered out because we didn't want to be the blunt object hammering Afghanistan into compliance. Do we want to repeat that in Ukraine? Absolutely not. And this senior U.S. official, whoever he or she is, made it abundantly clear that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, or they are a leaking sieve within the administration's strategic goals. So... And I think the Washington Post probably should have done a better job of vetting that, uh, given that, sure, tell the news, but there's a lot of opinion in this piece, and a lot of it is wrong. <laughs>